Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Morris in order traversal, right? Now, since you guys are already here in this video, I'm assuming that you know what in order traversal is, but just to refresh your mind, let me just tell you what in order traversal is, right? What does the in order traversal method look like? The in order traversal, in order traversal method stands for left, root, and right. What this is, is that you need to traverse all the left nodes if you need to traverse all the right root nodes of it and then go to the rightmost nodes, right? So if I tell you to print out the in order traverse, in order list of these this binary tree, what do you do is you'll go to the leftmost node like this, go to one, two, and four. This is the leftmost node. You'll sprint four over here because there's no left present over here and there's no right present over here for it. Then you print four, which is going to be the root node of it, right? And then you go back to two over here. Right, when you go back to two, you print two over here and then you'll go to the right nodes of it, which is five. When you come to five, you see that there's no left node present. So you'll print, uh, you'll, uh, you know, print out or store five over here in this array, which is gonna be the root node of it. You'll go to six over here afterwards, which is the right node of five. You'll see that there's nothing present on the left. You'll go back, you'll store six, which is gonna be the root node. Then you go to its right, you see nothing is present. Then you go back to six, then you go back to five, you go back to two, then you go back to one, right? Once you go back to one, you sprint, you store one, and then you go to one's right, which is three. You see that there's nothing present on the left. You, uh, you store three, which is gonna be the root node. And then you go to its right, there's nothing present. So this is gonna be the in order traversal for you, right? So <clears throat> this is what the in order traversal is. Right, let me just rub all of this one second. Okay, yeah, so this is what the in order traversal is. Now, why do we need Morris in order traversal? Okay, let me just make the tree again by six, and this is gonna be three. Okay, so why do we need Morris in order traversal? Morris in order, in order, question mark. Why do we need this? Right. What is the time complexity of the standard in order traversal? The time complexity of the standard in order traversal code because, uh, recursively or iteratively is going to be O of n, right? Which is fine. But the space complexity for both those methods, again, is going to be O of n, right? What happens in Morris in order traversal is that it's going to keep your time complexity constant, which is going to be O of n, but it changes the space complexity of your code to O of 1 which makes it much better than the standard, you know, um, and then the standard in order traversal, which you do using recurs recursion or, iter uh, you know, using iteratively. It just makes it much better, right? So what is Morris in order traversal? One second, let me just remove all of this. Okay. Yeah. So what is Morris in order traversal? Morris in order traversal basically means that Let's say if you're using recursion in your binary tree, right? What happens is that if you're using recursion uh, to make the in order traversal, you go from one to two, right? Let me take a different color. Let me just change this. Uh, okay. You go from one to two, then you go from two to four, right? Uh, but you have to, when you go back from four to two, right? You have to, you can go back to four, uh, obviously, because there's nothing present from four on the left and right. You just go back from four to back to two. Right, which is fine. Now, when you go back to two, do you have to go to its right, which is going to be five, and you go back to you go to six now, right? There's nothing present over here. Then you go back to five, and then you go to six over here, right? Now, from six, we all know if we follow the in order traversal, the next value that we need, to, if we are storing all these values in a, you know, uh, if we're storing all these values in an array or something, we know that the pattern is going to be four, two five, six, and then we go to one, right? From six, we have to go to one, right? But what we can do, but what happens in recursion is to go back to one, we first have to then go back to five, which will go back to, you know, two, which will go back to one, right? This is what will happen in recursion. So what does Morris in order traversal say is that you can create threads. Okay, let me just, you know, um, clean all of this once. It says that you can create threads. Now, what do you, what I mean by threads is that from six, if I create a thread like this, you know, uh, something like this, something like this, right? If I create a thread like this, 
going pointing directly to one, right? Uh, I can directly jump from six to one without having to go back from six to five to two to one, right? That's what Morrison or traversal says. You have to create a thread like this. Now, again, when we look over here from four, because we didn't have any extra values over here, it just had to jump back to two over here, which was pretty simple. But what if it was a big number, like something, let's say we had something more over here, like, uh, you know, uh, eight, nine, um, seven, something like this, right? Then would you basically just, you know, if we do the in order traversal from this, for this tree, what we have seen that we have go gone from seven, we went to four, then we would have gone to eight, then nine, and from nine we would have jumped to two, right? We wouldn't have gone to any other number, but to two like this. So we could have just created a thread like this, right? And even for seven, if you look at it logically, right? If we go from seven to four, because this is, doesn't have any, you know, trees over here, we're not, we're just going to jump back to four, but logically we can create a thread over here as well, right? If we create a thread over here, we, you know, remove the whole constraints of, you know, jumping from, you know, from going back from nine to eight, then four, then going to two, you remove all those stack space and go directly from, you know, seven to four or nine to two or six to one. This is what the Morrison or traversal says, right? Uh, so how are we going to make this tree? How are we going to make this thread tree? Firstly, uh, let me just, you know, clean this all up and let's make, start from scratch again. Okay. Let me make the tree again. One, two, four, three, five, six. Right. Now, if I want to use the Morrison or traversal in this tree, how we can do this? If you think about it logically, right? If you think about it really logically, see over here, we created a thread from four to two, right? And we created a thread from six to one, right? This is what the Morris in order traversal, the threads are going to be like in Morris in this tree for Morris in order traversal, right? But if you look at it closely over here, right? What's happening over here? If this one is our current node, what node is the, uh, what node, on what node are we adding the thread? so that we connect it to the current node over here. We're connecting the current nodes. Let me just write in a different color. Okay, let me just write in a green over here. We're connecting the current nodes, left nodes, rightmost node, rightmost node. Okay, now see over here. This is our current node, which is, you know, one one is our current node right what is the left node of one it's going to be two two is the left node of one and what is the rightmost node of the left node current nodes left node left nodes rightmost node yeah okay what is the rightmost node of two if you look at over here six is the rightmost node of two right so we connect the current nodes left nodes rightmost node like this and make a thread over here. And we look over here, right? What is the current node over here? Let's, you know, remove this. Uh, let's take this. We just, okay, one second. This is gonna be two, four, uh, five and six, right? Uh, we already created a thread. You, I think you understood how you created a thread for six. Now, if you look over here for four and two, right? If we jump from the current node and make this the current node right now, if we, two is our current node right now, right? What is the left node of two? Four is the left of two. And what is the rightmost node? There's no rightmost node, right? But if there's no rightmost node, doesn't that, that just mean that four is the rightmost node of two, right? If you think about it logically, that is the case, right? Four is going to be the rightmost node. If four is the rightmost node, we just create a thread like this, right? And if you create a thread like this, this is how your structure is going to be, right? Now let's look at this at a different example as well. So let me just make a bigger tree so you guys can understand it much better. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, you know, nine, ten, something like this, uh, eleven. Uh, okay, let's just take this, right? What did what did I just say? Right, we have to take the current nodes, current nodes, 
left nodes, current nodes, left nodes, rightmost node, right? Right most node. And let's just rephrase this. The current nodes, immediate left node, immediate left nodes, rightmost node. So I think this is going to make it much better to understand. So if I have the current node equal to one, right? So I go from the current nodes, go to current nodes, left node, which is going to be two, right? This is my immediate left node. And we go to the rightmost node, which is going to be two, seven, and then 10. So this is my immediate rightmost node, right? If I make it like this, I add a thread over here, right? Now, when I have this, now let's jump to a different uh, node. Okay. So if I, let's remove this and I add a curve over here, right? If I add a curve over here, what is my left node? The immediate left node is four, right? And what is the rightmost node of four? It is, it is nine. So we add a thread from nine to two like this, right? Now let's change the current node. Our current node is four over here. If our current node is four, what is the immediate left node is six. And what is the rightmost node? It is again six because there is no left over here. So six is going to be the immediate left right node. So we can just add a thread like this, right? Now, if we go from one to three, if three is our current immediate right node, right? Uh, three is a current node, right? What is the immediate left node? It's eight. And from eight, there's nothing. So basically it is itself going to be the leftmost node. Let me just take the color. It's going to be the immediate left node, which is we make a thread tree over here like this. Now when we jump to five, like this, right? We see that there's nothing present over here. There's a none present over here, right? And this is our very first edge case. Now, what is our very first edge case? That if, Let's say if we have a tree, something like this one and three, that's it. Five, eight, right? If I have a none over here present, do I need to add a thread over here? Right. There doesn't need to be right. There doesn't need to be any thread from anything from, if there's nothing present on the left, you don't need to connect anything to one, right? You can directly just start from one and then jump to three because that is going to be the in order, uh, in order traversal, because you're going to be one is going to be the root node. And then we jump to the right node. And if you follow that pattern, we can just store one in the tree first, then three, then five, then eight. And that is it, right? This is going to be your in, in order to, uh, in order tree fashion, right? You don't need to add a thread over here. And that is your very first edge case, right? And since you already saw that, understood this, you don't need to add anything over here. Let me just change this. Okay. Let's take a, uh -huh. now. Because you don't need to add anything over here, there doesn't need to be any thread on five. And if you go to curl 11, there doesn't need to be any thread on 11 as well, because it doesn't have a left node or right node, right? So if you remove all of this um, the gibberish from here, let's say all this messiness over here, let me just, uh, let's just remove all of this as well. And this, okay. And this, let me just make it again. Right. If I make it like this, right, you can see that this is, this eight is going to point here, 10 is going to point here. And this is going to be our threaded binary tree structure for this, right? So this is it. Now, how are we going to code this? Let me just rub everything once and let's start from scratch again. Right now, let me take, a, okay, this and this. Yeah. So if we have a tree, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if we, uh, if you have a tree like this, so how are we going to code this? The very first edge case, which I told you, if you remember that if your left node, if your current dot left is equal to none, basically, if you don't, the current node doesn't have a left node, you can just go to the right node. Okay. You can just append the current node, which is going to be one and then go to the right node like this. Basically, uh, you can just append the curl dot val and go to the rightmost node, which is going to be, uh, you can just go to the right node. Basically, if all of this tree wasn't present like this and we had a none over here, right? If we had a none over here, 
we could have just gone directly we didn't have to add a thread or anything we would have just add this this node to the, you know our list of in order traversal in order traversal of nodes one and we could have just jumped to three we would have checked if three had a left or right it doesn't anything if we would have a left we would have gone and added a thread something like this but it doesn't have anything so it would have just added three as well and we would have just returned the list right so this is going to be your very first edge case okay now what else what are we going to do over here okay okay now what what did i tell you we have to go to the current nodes leftmost node current nodes immediate right node immediate immediate left node sorry you have to go to the immediate left node and we have to go to its rightmost node right okay so as i said uh, we're going to go to the current nodes immediate left node immediate left nodes rightmost node right so you know let's just do a dry run as we solve the problem as i show you how to code this it'll be much easier to understand uh, you know as and when we just do this okay so what did i tell you what was the very first thing we had to do firstly let's start from scratch you know firstly what we'll do is we'll create an in order list where we just store our output and we'll just return it right and we'll keep a curve value over here which is equal to root right because we don't want to make any changes to the root right so we just keep a curve value over here which is equal to root right now right so this is root and this is also curve currently okay now what we'll do is while curve is not equal to none or is to say while curve um yeah yeah while curve what we'll do is firstly we'll check as a very first edge case mentioned if our current node curve dot left is equal to none or not if it is equal to none what we'll do is we'll just append the current value under append the current value which is curve dot val to the list and we'll go to the right right curve dot right correct this is our very first edge case and this is the very first step right if you don't have a left node over here in this portion you just go to the right over here cool now secondly else if there is present if there is a left node present right what we'll do is firstly we're going to create a prev value and we're going to make it equal to curve dot left okay so in this case a current value is this right and we'll make our prev equal to this okay now what did i say we had to go to the you know we had to go to the current roots immediate left node now our prev is going to be our immediate left and we have to go to the rightmost node of it right now how are we going to go to the rightmost node of it firstly well, let me just change the color how are we going to the rightmost node we'll check while prev dot right okay if we have a value on the right we'll go to the right and also if prev dot right is not equal to curve and you'll understand why we're doing this step in just you know just a minute when we do the dry run i'll explain you why we're doing this step as well okay while prev dot right and prev dot right prev dot right is not equal to curve prev is equal to prev dot right okay cool so we'll just jump from prev is equal to prev dot right basically right now since we have a prev value we'll jump from prev uh, we'll jump make this prev equal to this we'll go over here and when we reach this position right we come out of this loop over here and we'll write uh if prev is equal to equal to none then prev dot right is equal to cur right we'll just do the step so if our prev right now is none right currently it is none cool so if it is none sorry prev dot right is none what we we'll do is we'll just append attach this to our cur over here correct if we attach this over here what we'll do right if we attach this over here this is done right we have a threaded binary tree attached over here right and once we attach this what we're also going to do uh once again can we yeah 
yeah i can go down right cool if i'm really sorry about the background noise guys there's some construction work going on over here right so if we go to the right what we'll do after this it will just attach we'll make a cur equal to cur dot left cool so what is our cur dot left if our cur is equal to cur dot left right our prev is 6 right and our cur dot left is now going to be this is going to be our root this was our prev this all was our prev let me just change this this is 2 this is 5 this is 6 right this is yellow pointing to 1 and right now we make this equal to cur right this is going to be our cur over here right now cool if this is going to be our cur we come over here then we go again inside the for loop again right now while cur it is again still there present right while cur if cur dot left is equal to none right if cur dot left is equal to none it is not it is not equal to none so what we we'll do is we'll make prev equal to cur dot left so our prev is equal to cur dot left which is 4 now while prev dot right and prev dot right not equal to cur prev is equal to prev dot right right so prev uh, so when we come over here, when we have four over here, now wh while prev dot right, we don't have anything on the right, correct? So if prev of dot right is equal to none, then we just make prev dot right equal to cur. Currently our prev dot right is equal to cur, so we'll just make our prev dot right equal to cur, point to cur basically, and we point to cur. And lastly, what we'll do over here is make cur equal to cur dot left, and now our cur is equal to this. Cool. So this is what happened right now. Correct. Now let me just write this again. This is equal to our cur. Right now, uh, again, while cur, cool. If cur dot left is equal to none, now see over here, it is none. Cur dot left is equal to none. So what we'll do is we'll just append four to our in order list like this, and we'll make cur equal to cur dot right. Cool. Now when we make cur equal to cur dot right. We don't have anything on the right, but as you know, we made this thread over here pointing to two. So our curve will now be equal to two again. Okay. So we're jumping directly from where we wanted to go, right? We went, we wanted to go to two. We didn't have anything on the right, right? We jumped directly to two because we made a thread over here, right? So we're jumping back over here. Cool. Now, one second. Yeah. Now, since we went to our right, okay, uh, let me just write this here properly. Cur is equal to cur dot right. Okay, just think about the indentation properly. This all is in one level. Okay, all of this and this if else loop or else block as well. Okay, now, cool. Now, else prev is equal. Okay, so our cur is equal to cur dot right. We went to two. Cool. Next, now since our cur is at two, we check while cur. Okay, while cur. Uh, sorry, yeah. While cur, uh, if cur dot left is equal to none, right? In order to append now, cur dot left is not equal to none, so we come over here. While prev is equal to cur dot left, right? If prev is equal to cur dot left, again we'll make this prev. Cool. If while prev is equal to right, prev dot right and prev dot right is not equal to cur. But if you see over here, now you'll understand why we what we'll do with the threaded trees when it's made. Right, because if we don't, what happens over here, right, we'll be stuck in a complete loop if we don't remove this thread. Okay, we have to re remove this thread at some point. And when do we remove this, right? We added, or we already added four to our list over here, right? Now, when we add four to our list and make it point back to two, when you add it, make it point back to two, right? It'll follow the same procedure again and you'll be stuck in a loop. So the second time when you come over here, Right, when you, for the second time when you come over here, you remove this thread over here so that you don't get stuck in a loop. So that is what we have to do over here. Right, if prev dot right is equal to none, but prev dot right is not equal to none. Right, it is pointing to two. It is not equal to none. Right, but we don't want it to point to none. So what happens if it doesn't point to none? We haven't written the case for that. Else, if it does, if we don't want to make point to none, we'll make it. Prev, sorry, we want to make it point to none back again. Prev dot right is equal to none. It won't point to cur this time. This time it will point to none over here. 
Okay, this will point to none and we'll remove this. Uh, let me just move it up. We'll just remove this uh, thread over here. Uh, let's take a blue now this time. We'll just remove this thread completely like this. So this thread, I mean, okay, so let me just make it again. So two, four, right, uh, this is connected. This thread was connected and we remove this thread, right? This thread is now removed. Cool. If this thread is now removed, we made this prev point in none. So again, this is pointing nothing. Four is pointing nothing, right? And we'll just make four is pointing nothing. And what we'll do is we'll append our current node, which is in order, dot append cur dot val dot val, which is basically our two, right? Two our two is our cur dot val. We'll append it to our list like this. We'll just append this to our list and we'll move forward in our loop. And when, how do we move forward? We'll make cur equal to cur dot right because we're done with the left and we don't want to get stuck in the loop, the whole thing again. So the logical thing is just to move to the right, right? So we'll just move to the right over here. Let me just take this and we'll make cur equal to cur dot right. Cool. So this is what we'll do. Cool. All right. So this is what we're doing over here. Now, since a curve is equal to cur dot right, let me just remove this prev curve everything and this thread is also removed now so let's remove this as well this is two this is four okay just for understanding let's just add the thread and just make a cancel sign on it so that it's understandable we made a thread and we removed it okay this is removed cool now our current node is at five five is our point five is our current node now what we'll do while curve, if curve dot left is equal to none, okay. If curve dot left is equal to none, it is equal to none, right? What we'll do is we'll just append the value in our current val, right? We'll just append it. We just have take a phi, and we'll append five over here, right? And we'll go to curve dot right. And let me just add write this properly as well. Uh, let's just remove rub this whole line off. And this is N O R D E R and cur equal to cur dot right. Cool. Then we just append it and we move the cur to our right. Cool. Let me just rub this again. And this is our cur now. Fine. This is what we've done. Now, okay. Now, when six is our cur. What we'll do is, is the current dot left equal to none? Yes, it is equal to none. So we'll just append six as well to our list over here and we'll go to cur dot right. Now, what is our cur dot right? A cur dot right, since it's pointing to one, we'll make it point over here directly back. We don't have to do the recursive stack backtracking again. We just have to just directly jump, uh, you know, jump back to one like this. So let's just rub this. Cool. So if we rub this, it's gone and uh, we are curved is back to one now. Cool. And just remember, we haven't removed this thread again. Now, what we'll do is we'll see prev equal to curve dot left or prev is equal to curve dot left. And while prev dot right and prev dot right is not equal to curve, right? So two is not equal to, so two has a prev dot right, right? And this prev dot right is not equal to curve. So we'll jump to five, prev is here. Then we jump to six, prev is here, right? Now, over here, since our prep dot right is not equal to cur, right? Our prep dot right is not basically actually this is not prep dot right equal, not equal to cur. We will loop through over here while prep dot right. We have a value in the right and prep dot right while prep dot right and yeah, unless and until this is null and this case is not true, we'll come over here when we come to prep dot right. Okay. We see that we come out of the loop. When we come out of the loop, we see that if prev is equal to none, it is not equal to none. We go to prev and we see that prev dot right. If it is not equal to none, which means it has a threaded tree. It has a thread present. So we'll just remove that thread like this. Prev dot right is equal to none. Like this, we we'll remove the thread. When we remove the thread, we just append the value. Basically, we just append one to our list over here like this. When we append one to our list and we just move to curve dot right. Now, when we move from cur to cur dot right, like this, we make this cur over here. We see that, uh, let me just move this, cur over here. We see that 
our tree is now at uh, three. Now, when we see the loop again, f curl is equal to left. f curl dot left is equal to none. It is none. We just append the value. So we just append three. And when we append three, we see that we move to curl dot right. And when we move to right, it is a none pointer over here. If it is a none pointed, we just come out of the loop. And when we come out of the loop, what we'll do is we'll just return an order. Cool. So this is how we're going to solve the problem, guys. And this is what Morrison order traversal is. So let me just show you how the code really looks. Uh, so it looks like this. Cool. And let me just run the code. Yeah, it, it is running on all test cases. And let me just submit the code. Yeah, it's submitted as well. So yeah, guys, that's all for today's video. If you like the video, do like, share, and subscribe. Do let me in the comments what I can do better to teach you guys these concepts. And also let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for any specific kind of videos you want to watch. And do check out my podcast as well. And do until next time, guys, thanks for watching.